In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to properly put in a tampon. So if you are new to using a tampon, it can be intimidating and even a little scary. And if you feel that way, relax, because just about every girl feels that way the first few times. In fact, I had a friend in college that still got nervous putting a tampon in, and she was 24. So it's okay to be nervous, but don't worry. I'm gonna walk you through it. It may not work out the first time, but with a little practice, most girls are able to do it without any problems. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give you some tips and some do's and don'ts with putting in a tampon. But first, my name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant specializing in women's health and gynecology for the past 11 years. And if you're new here, in the pink means in good health and spirit. So if you like being healthy and happy, click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell because you're in the right spot. So first off, let's talk about what part goes where. And in order to do this, we need to talk about the parts of a tampon and also where you put them. So let's start with the tampon. Now there are lots of different varieties and there are lots of different brands, but these are the basics. So you're gonna have the tampon with the string and then you're gonna have the applicator. So this white cottony part is the part that absorbs the menstrual blood. Most are made of cotton and rayon and it's super absorbent and it expands when it gets wet. This is good because as it expands, it helps to catch the blood from slipping past it to help prevent leaks. The string is there, so you can easily pull out the tampon when it's time. The string can also absorb a little bit of blood as well, which is good to help prevent leaks. Now let's move on to the applicator. Now there are plastic applicators and cardboard applicators, but they basically do the same thing, which is to help put the tampon inside the vagina. So you have this cylindrical applicator that surrounds the tampon itself. This is called the barrel. Then you have the plunger. This is what pushes the tampon out of the applicator and into your vagina. Most applicators are gonna have a grip where you can hold on while you're pushing the plunger in. You know you can also purchase just the tampon without the applicator, but I don't really recommend that for someone is, who is new to using tampons. You just use your finger to insert the tampon and not everyone is comfortable with that, even after they've been using tampons for a long time. So I recommend before you even try putting a tampon in to just get a tampon out, unwrap it and practice holding the plunger and pushing the tampon out. You can put it back in again and practice again and again. Once you get comfortable with that, try doing it just with one hand. So now that you have that down, let's move on to where it goes and how it goes in. So there are three holes in this general area. There is the rectum where the poop comes out. There is the urethra where the pee comes out and then there's the vagina where the menstrual blood comes out and where the tampon goes in. The urethral hole is up here and it's too small for a tampon to go in. Even the smallest tampon could never fit into the urethra. The vaginal opening is below the urethra. In order to get the tampon into the vagina opening, you need to spread the labia majora. Now some people call these the vaginal lips. So you need to spread them apart so you can access the vaginal opening. I like this model that I have here because it's, it's see-through and it, you can see what's going on inside when I put a tampon in here, but uh, it gives you a false sense of what the anatomy looks like. Here it shows a gaping hole for the vagina. That's not anatomically how it is. Your vagina isn't open and gaping like this. It's actually called a potential space. You have vaginal muscles that keep this closed and open when you put a tampon in or menstruation comes out. So I just wanted to point that out so you didn't think that this is how it was supposed to look down there. It's not this big open hole. The first thing before inserting a tampon is to wash your hands so you don't introduce bacteria and germs into the vaginal area. So there are generally three different positions that you can be in to insert your tampon. You can either sit on a toilet, you can stand with one foot on the bathtub or a chair or the toilet, or you can bend both knees and squat. Honestly, most girls insert it on the toilet, but you should try all three positions and decide what you are most comfortable with. So as I mentioned before, you spread the vaginal lips with one hand and then you place the tampon applicator at the vaginal opening and then you push the tampon and applicator into the vagina all the way up to the grip. Next step is to push the plunger all the way in. And then finally, you remove the applicator. Be careful not to hold onto the string while you pull the applicator out. If you do, you'll pull the tampon out with the applicator. A mistake people make is that they only put the tip of the applicator to the vaginal opening and then push the plunger in. When you do that, that puts the tampon at the lower part of the vagina and the vaginal opening. And when the tampon is here, it's really uncomfortable and sometimes even painful. Now, if you have accidentally placed the tampon too low, you can take one finger and use it to push the tampon up higher. 
You cannot push it too high. It won't go into the cervix or into the abdominal cavity or anything like that. Think of the, think of the vagina like a tube sock. It can't get lost in there. There's a top. So as I promised, I wanted to give you some tips to make things a little easier for you. If you are sitting on the toilet, to insert your tampon, you want to aim the tampon at a 45 degree angle. So this model right now demonstrates if you were laying down on your back, but if you're sitting on a toilet, it's actually tilted more like this. You want to aim the tampon at approximately a 45 degree angle. So not this way, not this way. So you want to insert it towards your lower back. If you're putting it in and you feel like it stops before it's all the way in, you've probably hit the vaginal wall. So you want to pull it out a little, redirect it at a 45 degree angle and then insert it. If you are on one of your heavier flow days and you're worried about leaking through your tampon, it's not a bad idea to wear a light pad or a panty liner to catch any spotting, just in case. I also recommend wearing a pad overnight. Some people like to leave the tampon string dangling and you might be able to feel that when you walk. And sometimes it gets pee on it when you urinate. And for that reason, some girls like to tuck the string and put it in between the labia. You don't have to do that. Sometimes it makes it a little harder to find the string when it's time for the tampon to come out, but because of comfort, a lot of girls choose to do that. Speaking of taking a tampon out, let's go over how to do that. So you should take the tampon out as often as the tampon fills up, but no longer than eight hours. To take the tampon out, sit down on the toilet or put a leg up on the toilet and grab the string and slowly pull. If you notice there's discomfort or friction, it's probably because the tampon is too dry. If this happens, you can either leave it in a while longer, but no longer than eight hours, or you can take it out slowly, but use a smaller or lighter tampon the next time. If you're struggling to get it out, take a deep breath and relax. If you're anxious, your vaginal muscles can get tighter and that makes it even harder to take out. You can even try a relaxing warm bath for a few minutes before you try to take it out. You can even take it out while you're in the bathtub. So I personally like having a tampon box that has a few different sizes because your period isn't like a faucet where you turn it on, it flows at the same amount for four days and then the faucet turns off. You have spotting days, then light days, then heavier days, and then back to lighter days. So these boxes have tampon sizes to fit wherever you are in your cycle. Lots of different brands come in a variety pack. I'll link to a few in the video description, but seriously, it does take practice. So don't give up. After the first try, if it doesn't work out, you'll get better at it. It gets less awkward, I promise. That being said, tampons aren't for everyone. You might try it a few times and decide you prefer not to use them and that's totally okay. Pads are another good option. And fortunately, there's another option that I wish I had when I was younger and that is period underwear. They are reusable. You don't have to worry about sticky tabs. They are a one-time purchase. So you don't have to keep buying pads every single month. So it's cheaper in the long run and it's better for the environment. The next thing that we have to talk about is a serious complication of tampons that can happen if you leave a tampon in too long. It's called toxic shock syndrome and it's a bacterial infection that could potentially be life-threatening, but it's pretty rare, but I wanted to go over the symptoms just so you know what to watch for. So first, a rash um, on your palms and soles. It kind of looks like a sunburn, nausea, vomiting, confusion, uh, fever, sore throat. So if you've had a tampon in for over eight hours and you start experiencing any of these symptoms, you need to call your doctor right away or just go to the ER. So if you're interested about toxic shock syndrome and learning more about it, I will be doing a video soon all about toxic shock syndrome and go into more detail about it. So if you want to watch that, be sure to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when that video comes out. Okay, so if you have any questions, I want you to put that in the comment section below. I love to read your comments and my other viewers love to read your comments and stories too. It helps everyone to know that they are not alone in these girl experiences, because you're not. Because half the population are girls, so like 3.5 billion other human beings know what you're going through, including myself, so hey, Subscribe if you want more videos like this and hit the like button if you like this video. Right here is a video about what causes tampon pain. Click on that video and I'll see you in the next video.